is Stefania Spampinato, and I was born in Catania. I grew up in a tiny city called Bel Paso, and now I live in Los Angeles. In Sicily, I grew up in a very conservative uh, environment. All my uncles and aunties are very jealous and possessive, and so my mom kind of broke a barrier by letting me go to Milan when I was 18 to pursue a career in dancing, which was like, no, you cannot sustain yourself. You cannot pay rent or a mortgage by dancing. It's a very sweet story because my parents couldn't really afford to support me in dance lessons because it was very expensive and the costumes were very expensive. So I told my parents, I was like, Mom, I don't want to go dance anymore, knowing that they couldn't afford it and I didn't want to be a burden on them. And uh, she actually went to the dance teacher and asked to make my costumes for the recital. And the teacher said yes. So my mom had never, had no like experience sewing or anything. They were horrible. They were the ugliest costume, but they kind of matched the other ones. And thanks to her, I was able to keep studying and keep doing the recitals. And she got better and better to the point that she became the official seamstress of the school and she made all the costumes. And at 16, I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to become a lawyer anymore. I want to become a dancer. She was like, why? <laughs> no, don't do that. But she supported me. And when I was 18, I moved to Milan and I did the performing arts school for three years. After the three years, I started working in Italian TV as a dancer. On a job, I met this dancer that was Sicilian, but lived in London. We became very good friends and he was the one that encouraged me to go to London for a week and try it out. Didn't speak a word of English. I went to my first audition and they were like, okay, profile. And I was like, <laughs> profile. And I was like, <laughs> and thank God with dance, they have to show you what you have to do. So I had time to then learn and practice English. I got my visa, I moved to LA, but I hated it. I hated Los Angeles, it was so hard. And I felt like I had to start from zero at 29 with a career that I had been pursuing for 10 years. I struggled. I didn't know what to do. I didn't really, I was falling out of love with dance. I felt like it wasn't fulfilling anymore. I actually went to an open acting class to support a friend and watch one of uh, his scenes. And it hit me. I was like, okay, this is it. This is what I want to do. It felt like a very organic next step from being a dancer. Starting a new career as a foreign actress in Los Angeles is so hard. And telling your parents, I'm, I'm gonna start acting. They're like, what at 30, why? And I'm waiting tables in the meanwhile. And it's just, your ego is crushed. Like you're literally stepping on your ego over and over again. Because I was getting so many audition and so far and few in between, I was so nervous when I was in the room. I was auditioning for an Italian speaking role and I couldn't say the word because I was so nervous. Like my lip was shivering so hard that I couldn't even say what I was supposed to say. The accent already limits you immensely because there is only probably, I don't know, maybe one audition every couple of months for Italian roles. When they want an Italian actress, they also open the audition to the Spanish, the French, the Colombian, the, 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 the Brazilian. For them, an accent is an accent. It doesn't necessarily have to be an Italian accent, an authentic Italian accent. So you get one audition every two months and the whole foreign community auditions for it. I thought about giving up every other week, pretty much. Somehow though, every time I was right about to give up, something would happen that just gave me the strength to keep going a little longer. I don't know why, but it happened like when I truly was ready, because a lot of times you're like, ah, oh, I don't wanna do this anymore, I give up. But when I was truly so crushed that I was like, okay, this is it, I can't do this anymore, something would happen, like a, a, a small job, or like an email from an agent, or an email from a casting director that would just give you hope and, refill the energy tank and give you the strength to keep going for a little longer. With my family it was really hard because my whole family is in Sicily. So it was very hard to explain to them, uh, I'm getting all these rejections, but I'm gonna keep going. They kept saying like, why don't you smart? You, you can do other things. Why don't you just do something else? Why do you have to 
wait tables and at 35 at 34 while waiting for a big break that usually doesn't come and so after a while I stopped telling them that I was even auditioning for projects because telling them about my rejection was so painful I felt like I was suffering for the rejection but also suffering with them because of their pain and their disappointment for my non-successful journey so I was like I think I need to stop telling them and deal with it by myself on the Wednesday night I'm crying in acting class because of my accent and because of how limiting it is because of, I just only get a very small role like auditions for very small roles I'm like I am this is exhausting I again I was like I'm quitting I'm on the verge of quitting. That night, I get an, uh, an email from the manager that tells me, we have an audition for you. It's a role for Grey's Anatomy. It's a guest star role, maybe one, two episodes, and they want an actress that speaks fluent Italian. So I go to the audition the morning after, and because I was so exhausted, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go and have fun. And the casting director was like, what like let's do the scene and slowly they warmed up to me and two hours later I get a phone call from my manager saying that I had booked a job and I literally screamed so loud that the neighbor texted me if everything was okay because she thought somebody's killing her or kidnapped her or whatever well the hardest thing is that the first person I wanted to call would have been my mom but I lost my mom two years before once you experience something like a loss that big nothing is that important like not booking a job doesn't become that important but booking it and not being able to share that with her was very hard my mom was my biggest supporter my mom was the reason like the number one reason why i was even able to go to london go to los angeles and she gave me the freedom and the strength like while i was doing my performing art college i had to work in a pub every night to be able to support myself and to pay for my studies but my mom gave me the freedom she never had the night before going on set for the first time I was terrified and the first scene that I shot was with a woman director Debbie Allen which is a very strong woman I was very lucky because in the scene there was a lot of Italian and nobody else apart from me and the, the actor who plays my brother spoke Italian so I was like ha I can do it and say whatever I want and nobody's gonna and that made me very comfortable because I felt like I had a point of advantage compared to everybody else and I was like okay I can anchor myself on this Italian thing and then go and do the rest so that really helped. For the first part of my time in Los Angeles my friends were mostly American and then I met my first Italian friend that is in the entertainment industry and then through him I met more and more people and in the last couple of years I feel like I've met a lot I didn't even know how many Italians were in Los Angeles until a couple of years ago and it, it was such a great discovery because it's hard for all of us so having a, a support group of people that know it, exactly what it feels like to be so far from home it makes you feel like a home away from home instantly women shifting from being object to being subject is a very tough shift to make and it's all up to us unfortunately we have to change people's mind and sometimes as women I feel like we have to work five times as hard to achieve the same thing that a man can achieve very easily choosing what we watch who we follow how we portray ourselves on social media is fundamental because there is very good stuff out there that has been directed and written and starred by women. So let's start investing time and energy in that. So I always say that I'm building my El Cassetto, El Mio Cassetto dei Sogni. I'm building it and I'm just starting to put dreams in there and I hope it keeps going. <laughs>